In today's video, we are going to be hitting up the thrifts in search of an outfit for every Taylor Swift era. From her debut all the way through midnights and everything in between, you'll find out which era's dress made me feel like a cupcake and which outfit I would wear in real life. Buckle up, y'all, and come along as I thrift a Swift. This era was pretty much defined by lots of dresses paired with cowboy boots. Most of the dresses that you'll see were definitely of the time, very mid-2000s in terms of the cut with the handkerchief hem and lots of kind of mixed bold prints and patterns, very 2000s Y2K style. Even the album cover had really bold colors with blues and greens and butterflies all over it. I found this dress <laughs> that really looked like somebody actually took the album cover and just printed it on the dress. But I really liked the kind of seafoam mint green look, so that's kind of what I was trying to go for. And I think I pulled it off. This is one of the first pieces of the day that I found and the cut and the color were so close to what I was looking for. I was so stoked. I didn't find any boots that I liked better than these ones that I had at home. And I mean, come on. Yes, I'm clapping for myself. I also threw in these Texas earrings because you gotta represent your home state, y'all. When I think of the Fearless era, there are three things that really stand out to me. Number one would be the color gold. There was a lot of gold from the album cover to the dresses. Number two, there was a lot of sequins, mostly in the formal gowns. But definitely the biggest thing that stands out to me from Fearless is the fringe. There was so much fringe. These are the things that we're gonna be looking for today when looking for an outfit for Fearless. A gold fringe, black fringe, some gold sequins, something along those lines. I do think it might be a pretty tall order to find a super fringy gold or black dress in a day. So let's see what we can do. I knew this was going to be a hard one. So is it perfect? Definitely not. Did I understand the assignment? Definitely. I'd have to give myself a C plus, maybe a B minus for the dress and definitely an A plus on the boots. The boots are just like, why did they have these here? They're so good. The look I really liked was this. And when you put these two pieces together, I think it looks really good and I think we're verging on an overall B plus. Pretty much the only thing that I wanted for Speak Now was the iconic purple dress. I didn't really have my eyes peeled for anything else. I was finding a lot of purple dresses but they were all kind of like the lifetime movie version of the Speak Now dress where you can tell what they're going for and it's passable but it's still slightly off. You know what I mean? I literally almost gave up until I came across this dress at the very last store that I went to. I was about to pass out from exhaustion. I've been shopping for like 10 hours at this point, but I thought that this dress was close enough that I could make it work. I just needed to take the rosettes off of the strap. And then once I did that, I had to soak it and get all the glue off from where the rosettes were sitting. And since the dress was long and I'm not a seamstress, I ended up cutting it by hand with scissors, so don't judge me on the cut of it. If I was gonna wear this in public, I would definitely get it done professionally and have it hemmed, but I think I did a pretty good job. There's not really much to say about this one other than I am pretty impressed that I was able to pull it off considering I was about to throw in the towel on this era. I think it's pretty spot on. <laughs> despite my insanely crooked hem, but it was kind of hard to do with scissors because there was multiple layers of the dress. And so despite that, I think I nailed it. What do you guys think? With red, I'm sure you guessed, but there was a lot of red clothes going on, but also a lot of black and white mixed in with that. I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting this dress. It was a very, Y2K 90s style prom dress. And now that I look at it, 
It looks so much like the dress that I wore to my graduation, but I was pretty settled on trying to find something similar to when she would wear the white lacy top or the white collared shirt with the black shorts and then the red shoes and sometimes the fedora hat. So that's what I was trying to find. And you would think out of all of the freaking hats that I was finding that they would have had a fedora, but that was proving to be kind of difficult. So I did my best. I'm going to start off by saying what we're all probably thinking. The hat <laughs> is a bit of a fail. But like I said, the fedoras were surprisingly nowhere to be found on this day. Goodwill's like sparkle boots. Yes fedoras no um okay goodwill overall though i think the outfit is a total success i can't believe i managed to find the top and shorts but mostly the red shoes too that was a shocker i was ready to just throw in some red socks and call it a day but let's just pretend that i don't have <laughs> the hat on I can't. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, so 1989, in terms of the aesthetics, it's probably low on the totem pole for me. There was a lot of galactic and celestial kind of vibes going on, which was pretty popular at that time. She would also wear a lot of co-ward skirt and top sets. And I think those are pretty cute, the a la Alice and Olivia look. But I think the thing that I'm gonna be looking for today and that what kind of stands out to me from that era is her tour look with the skater skirt, the crop top, the kind of shimmery sequin crop top, and then the bomber jacket with sequins. Those again are kind of dated looks and styles. So we'll see what we can do. I'll be the first to admit I might have been wrong about this being low on the list. Now that I see it put together, I'm kind of digging it and clearly <laughs> I'm feeling myself. Good lord. This wasn't actually a crop top. It was a regular tank so I just folded it up because the midriff has to be showing for this look to work. And I found a skater skirt. I found several skater skirts but this was the only one that actually fit. And I got the black ankle boots to top it off. Personally, I like this look better without the bomber jacket, but I managed to find that too. And okay, I am here for this 1989. You look in 1985. Reputation is such a fun era, is a fairly similar color scheme to red. Uh, lots of red and black and white, but it was a lot more dark and edgy, a lot more black. The snake imagery was very prevalent, so I want to find something with a snake on it. The album cover also had that newspaper print on the background, which you would see in a lot of the looks from that era, too. There was a few looks that I personally gravitate to from that era. Let's see how I do. I clearly could not make a decision between the snake and the tiger, so I just went for both. Why were all of these things just there? It's so insane. Newspaper shorts that literally say era on them and basically a dupe for the sweatshirt she was wearing and red over the knee boots is some kind of joke and a snake tee too. This is a wild y'all. And there is a no way I was leaving behind the snake shoes. Granted, they were like five sizes too big for me. They were coming home. I loved this blazer dress too. It reminded me of these two looks mashed together. And it makes up for the lack of the fringe in the fearless era. At least that's what I'm telling myself. At the beginning of the day, I was convinced that Lover was gonna be the easiest era to find an outfit for, but I was totally wrong. I did manage to find a few Lover-esque things in the beginning, some pastels, some rainbow, some sequins. The more I look at it, I do really like this denim jacket, but I hadn't found a dress yet, and so I ended up 
not getting that, which I'm kind of regretting now. But I was having a really hard time finding something that was a cohesive look. I almost gave up on this one too because I just wasn't finding anything <laughs> that I was happy with for this era until I walked into Out of the Closet and it was like somebody had just donated their entire lover wardrobe. It was crazy. If you guessed that this was the era that made me feel like a cupcake, then you would be right. The cloudy cupcake dress was more of a style-based look as opposed to a direct look that I've seen her wear. I know a lot of the people have been wearing the selkie dresses for this era, and although I have thrifted a selkie dress before, that's a pretty rare occurrence since they're like $300 or something. So when I saw this dupe for $8, it was a no-brainer. I also did find this, which was like 60% of the way to that striped retro fet dress that she wore. The colors are different, but it seems like the deeper we're getting into this, it's harder to just choose one look or maybe <laughs> I'm just an indecisive shopaholic. I can neither confirm nor deny this. This era consisted of two sister albums, but they were very sonically and aesthetically similar. There was a lot of chunky knits, cottagecore, countryside, kind of minimal looks with a lot of plaids and ginghams thrown in. I love plaids because I'm a grunge girly at heart, so this is one of the looks that I would most likely wear in real life. These looks are just so comfortable and cozy, like a cool fall day. And I love plaids and mixing prints with the minimal makeup look. I mixed in the braid, which was also another look from this era, but I liked it with this outfit. The pieces I found, the dress and the jacket, they're not identical, but they were so close. The colors were dead bright, and I found these Sorel boots that just worked perfectly. Again, I wasn't gonna go for two looks, but when I saw the card again, I mean, duh, it had to make a cameo. I think the dress is like Anna Sui for anthropology and it went really well with a cardigan and I was able to wear the same boots. And trust me when I say the older you get, the more pajama-like your wardrobe starts to become, which is probably why I'm totally digging this. It makes me wanna sleep and I love sleep. Midnight's has a few things that I really, really like. As the name suggests, there's a lot of navy and blue, shimmery sequin paired with stars and fur that gives off this retro Hollywood vibe. I really liked this dress, but it was Princess Polly and they wanted like $50 for it. And that is criminal and I wasn't gonna do it just based off of principle. Secondly, there's a very heavy retro vintage 70s vibe, which I am totally into. And I wanted to find some of the orange, hopefully corduroy pants, but everything that I was finding was too big, too small, they fit weird. So with these two particular looks in mind, let's see how I did. I didn't end up finding any corduroy pants that fit me, but I did find these and I am obsessed. I also found this periwinkle lavender looking top to go with it, which I think captures that 70s vibe really well. And I had these really cool mid-century mod looking earrings, which just tied the whole look together for me. And for what has to be one of my favorite looks, I found this star necklace. Are you even kidding me? It is perfect. I know she has a romper on, but I found this midnight blue velvet dress that fit like a glove and this random white fur shawl thing. The old school Hollywood look is so timeless and this outfit was just seemingly waiting for me to put it together. Speaking of the old Hollywood retro style, that was literally the theme of my wedding. So if you dig that style, then you'll probably like the video where I went and got wedding dresses for super cheap at the thrift. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.